right, happy Monday to you. Hopefully it's been a great Monday so far. The weather here in Houston is beautiful. We're not being bothered by anything from the tropics, but I do want to share with you where we do have a little trouble brewing. Of course, we are in the next to last month of our hurricane season, and we had a brand new tropical storm develop out in the central Atlantic this morning. So let's get right to it. The name is Lorenzo, and it becomes the 12th name storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. It is expected to turn north and then gradually northeast later this week away from the U.S. and it should stay out over open waters. It even should stay south of the Azores, so I don't think it's going to cause any major trouble to anyone. Maybe a little bit of heavy rain for the Azores towards the end of the week, but no direct landfall. We are to about the middle of October, so we've got about 17% of our activity remaining for this hurricane season, so that's the best news I can give to you. We are are getting through it, zooming through this hurricane season. So far, not a single hit from a tropical depression, tropical storm, or hurricane for the Texas Gulf Coast. So I am happy to say if we can make it through a few more weeks, I think we're probably all good for this season. But of course, we're going to keep tracking it day by day, and we'll let you know if there's anything to worry about. As far as 2025, with the addition of Lorenzo, we're now up to 12 name storms. That puts us about two away from our average for an entire hurricane season. Four hurricanes, we're still three back from our average, and then major hurricanes, we're still tied for our seasonal average. Of course, the CSU meteorologist back in July predicted 16 name storms, eight of those becoming hurricanes, and three becoming major hurricanes. So we had some lulls in the action at times this season, but this Things have really picked up the last month and a half, and we are getting through these lists of names. So now the next name on the list would be Melissa, and then Nestor, and then Olga, and Pablo, and then Rebecca. So we still have the potential for more of these tropical systems to develop. Hopefully, though, nothing heading our way. Here's the good news with Tropical Storm Lorenzo. Yes, it formed this morning. It's got some decent wind and rain in it, but it is right in the middle of the Atlantic and is not really going to head even close to the U.S. At this point, Maximum sustained winds have increased to 50 miles per hour from 45 miles per hour earlier today. Pressure down to 1,002 millibars and it is moving to the northwest at 12 miles per hour. So it's in the middle of the Atlantic. Where is it headed? Well, notice it kind of moves north and then by Wednesday and Thursday makes even more of a curve to the north and east. Here are the Azores Islands here. It should stay south of the Azores. It's not going to become very strong, not forecast to become a hurricane. And we're basically just getting through another name storm without it doing any damage. So that's the way we like it. We use a name and get it out of here without it coming anywhere close to the U.S. So great news there. Here's our Fox Weather tropical model track of Lorenzo. Notice it kind of spinning, moving a little north, then jogging to the northeast by Thursday and Friday, but not ever coming anywhere close to us. So we don't have to worry about Lorenzo. So just as quickly as we said hello to it today, we could say goodbye. It won't be bothering us. Now, do we have any other issues to be concerned with closer to home? Well, this is the part of hurricane season where what we call the Central American Gyre can start to act up on us a little bit. This big, sprawling, large area of low pressure can sometimes generate smaller circulations or smaller areas of low pressure that can spin off of this thing and then head our way and turn into a tropical system. Now, we've been seeing this happening, but it's mainly been on the eastern Pacific side as opposed to the Northwest Caribbean or the Southern Gulf. So we're gonna watch it closely. At this point, water temps are still super warm out there well into the 80s for the Gulf and western parts of the Caribbean. So we certainly have the fuel needed for these tropical systems if they develop. Right now, the only area to watch around this Central American gyre is going to be in the Eastern Pacific, south of Guatemala, southeast of Acapulco. This is a disturbance, basically just some disorganized showers and storms right now. But if they get their act together, there's a medium chance that they could. This would be our next tropical system, but it would be an eastern Pacific system moving northwest. So it would get pretty close to Acapulco later in the week, but overall I don't think it's going to hop over Mexico and come into the Gulf and head our way. So here is our GFS model track of this system looking poorly organized the next few days, but then by Friday and Saturday you could see that counterclockwise spin south of Acapulco is getting its act together, and that's when we could have a tropical depression or a tropical 
tropical storm here. Notice that heavy rain getting close to the southern coast of Mexico. So maybe more problems for parts of southern Mexico later this week into the weekend, but in our neck of the woods across Houston, Texas Gulf Coast, things are looking pretty good. We do have a couple more weeks in October and notice it is still possible to get a tropical system in the Gulf for these last few weeks of the month. So we are keeping a close eye on things. November, that's when our chances really go down. Notice we're not even in the yellow area for November. So we'll keep watching it. But if we don't get anything in the next week or so for the Texas Gulf Coast, that's probably going to be it, at least for us for this season. But of course, we'll continue to watch the entire Atlantic Basin. And I'll let you know if I see anything that could be an issue.